Hello, and welcome to week one, unit three, security role design and reports. I'm your instructor. My name is Becky Walsh, and I'm excited to talk to you today about this. So um, in this unit, we're going to talk about some sample security roles um, and give you a couple examples of those. We'll talk about the use of an add-on security role. We'll talk about use of the all role within the system and what that means. And we'll also talk about um, reporting in the system as well with some recommendations on how to leverage and control access to reports. Okay, so with that, let's dive right in. So first we're gonna talk about some sample security roles. So with this, um, we've got four different examples for you. So the first one would be a super administrator. So this is someone in Success Factors Learning, an administrator who is not restricted to a certain, a, only certain functions, really anything that the business has enabled in the system, this user would have access to. So they would be the system owner for the business. Um, they would be at the highest level, have wide access, um, and be someone who would actually control access for others within the system. Um, this role would not typically be restricted by domain groups. Um, again, it's um, you know an owner role, it's very high level, and it has wide permissions within the system. Our second role is like an LMS administrator. So not someone who's maybe the owner, but someone who does do pretty um, hands-on training of users within the system. So they create entities, um, they manage training. This is a role that would be a good candidate for a security domain group role. Next, we have a scheduler. So this is someone who does not create entities um, in the same way that like an LMS administrator would, uh, but they would have a very active role in managing classes, rosters, um, enrollments, that kind of thing within the system. Um, so that would be kind of a reduced, um, a reduced responsibility role, kind of more, we're getting more narrow from an LMS administrator role. And last, we have a reporting role. So this is someone who just needs access to data in the system, but isn't necessarily someone who's taking as much of an active role in managing training. So it's really just someone who needs to extract data out of the system and have the access to do so. So with those four roles, um, the intent here is really to give you kind of a jumping off point, um, a starting point. So as you're designing roles in the system to kind of think of along, you know, these broad roles and then they get a little bit more narrow and a little bit more intentional. So next we wanna talk about the use of an add-on role. So in this example, we have, let's say you have a customer who has um, this scheduler role. So we just talked about that. So they manage classes, registrations, that kind of thing. Um, but let's say that you have, you know, several of these people who are schedulers, but one of these is also an instructional designer. And, you know, in, maybe we don't have a role that really fits that. What we could do is create an add-on role that just has these permissions to manage content within the system. So by creating this add-on role of like a content admin, it allows flexibility in the system to only grant this add-on role to specific administrators who require those permissions. Um, part of what this also does is, let's say the scheduler role changes a little bit and, um, you know, maybe there's some VLS virtual learning um, that we're enabling in the system, we can still go and do that and give it to all schedulers. Um, which will automatically give it to this user um, without having to maintain a whole separate role that would also need that need that additional permission. Um, another perk of this is that it allows us to test these roles um, separately. So we can still make sure that um, just someone with the content role that they only have those additional permissions that they need. So let's talk about another use case with this. Um, so let's say that you have a customer who decides to implement finance, but they're doing it on a very small scale. So you have LMS administrators within the system. Um, you know, they actively manage training and learning in the system. 
but we have one kind of pilot group and we have one admin who needs this additional permission. Um, here's where we could create that add-on role of finance and only grant it to this one you know, pilot group, this one pilot admin, um, and then add it on as time goes on if there's other, you know, maybe it's a slow rollout that we wanna slowly give people access to that. Um, so it allows the system, anyone in the system, to really also clearly know who, who, have, who have we granted this this admin finance access to. Um, so it's very clear when looking at someone's assigned roles um, that they're already an LMS admin, but this is also someone who has this additional add-on security role that gives them additional permissions within the system. So again, this is just an idea for you to think about some flexible ways to use roles and assigning of roles in the system to support the needs of the customer. Last, let's talk about use of the all role. So the all role within the system, so there's um, like an all connector, all everything, it, it grants completely wide access within the system. It also automatically will get any new functionality that is enabled in the system. So if there is a new release that has you know, enhance permissions to something, this role, this all role will automatically get those permissions. So one thing though about this role is that it can create an overwhelming experience for the customer. So if you have a new administrator who's new to the learning management system, having an all role where they have wide access to every single thing in the system, including functionality that maybe they are not using at the moment, can create an overwhelming experience for the customer. So the recommendation here, so if, you know, in some, some companies, they still want to have, you know, it's their system, they're the owner, they still want to have access to anything like that, but day to day, they don't need to see, you know, finance if they don't have access to that, or, um, you know, maybe some other functionality. So um, the idea here is that you could have a proxy role that has the, all of the permissions um, assigned to it. So um, let's say you have an administrator, they're the super administrator, they're the owner in the system, um, but they don't have functionality to finance, but they decide that they do want to explore that a little bit more. They want to look at that. That's where they could go um, and have the ability to proxy in as, you know, a test user or an admin user. And then that user has these wide permissions in that in success factors learning. Um, so they could still access that, but it would be more, more intentional. They're not going to accidentally wander into finance and start messing around. Um, it would have to be very intentional for them to start getting into functionality that is, is not part of what was implemented or part of their base role. Okay, so um, now that we've talked about roles, let's talk a little bit about reporting. So um, reporting in success factors learning is it comes with you know over 100 standard reports and as you pr probably know some of these reports are very useful and functional and provide critical information um, to our administrators to the business some of these reports are more one-off or reporting on functionality that they don't have enabled in the system so um, access to all reports for, especially for a new administrator, can create an overwhelming experience. So the recommendation here is to really dive into what are the requirements from the business um, for these different roles. What data do they need access to? What are going to be the reports that they use the most? Um, and really understand what role, what every role needs access to in order to support their their job, their day-to-day -day functions, um, et cetera. So we do have some specific reports that we've recommended um, and that's in the published IDP. Um, so some of those might be like curriculum status report, curriculum item status report, history report, hours report. Um, as you know, there's a lot. Um, so I would encourage you to go take a look at that um, if you're looking for some starting points on what what reports to recommend to your customer. Um, next, I wanna quickly say that the data that is 
visible in reporting is going to be granted and restricted based on the security um, security role, domain, domain groups that they're assigned to. So uh, reporting is a really great way to test the security within the system. So definitely if you're, as you're building out roles and looking at the access to data and who needs access to what data, it is a, a great way to validate that they have, that the role has access to the right information. Uh, but conversely, also that they don't have access to any information they should not see. Um, so if they run a report on all users, it should only return the users that they have access to. Um, also, quick note that um, restricted access is going to carry through to other modules. So if you're using um, reporting or analytics, it still is going to require that the user in the LMS who's accessing that data has the permissions to do so. So, um, okay, so with that, um, kind of a, a recap of what we've talked about today. So number one, we talked about some uh, standard security roles that you uh, may want to leverage or kind of use as a starting, a jumping off point when you're designing your security roles. Um, two, we talked about the use of an add-on role. So if you have kind of a one-off situation um, where someone needs some permissions that aren't part of the base role, but you don't want to create a whole new role, consider an add-on role. Um, after that, we talked about use of the all role and some recommendations there. Um, pros and cons, I would say, but really more just things to consider when you're um, using that role and assigning it to people in the system. Um, and lastly, some recommendations on um, how to use reports in the system, some ways to leverage them, some ways to maybe restrict access to admins to improve their user experience, especially for some of our newer customers. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. Uh, good luck on the quiz and I will see you in another unit.